Hi, I'm Dr. David Eagleman. Welcome to Neuroscience Shorts. I want to talk to you about something that my lab studies, haptics, the science of touch. I'm going to tell you about touch from skin to nerves to the brain. It's a complex and counterintuitive system, and it's a very beautiful one. We're going to look at how humans process touch, both consciously and unconsciously, and we're going to explore the powerful influence that it has on our lives. The largest organ in your body is actually on your body. It's your skin, and it's a miraculous sort of material. More than half the human brain is devoted to processing sensory experience, but unlike your other senses, which are focused, skin and touch, this is spread across your whole body. Touch is the only sense that puts you in direct contact with your subject. Sight and hearing, these operate at a distance, but you can't touch something without being touched yourself. So let's zoom in on how haptics works. You have many different receptor types embedded in your skin for detecting pressure and itch and coolness and stretch. And you have many different ways to detect pain. So there's mechanical pain, like when you get cut, and there's thermal pain when something's hot, and there's, there's chemical pain when there's an acid on your skin. And together, this whole zoo of receptors inside your skin allows you to tell a lot about the outside world in terms of texture and temperature and pressure and roughness and hardness. Your sense of what's out there is totally dependent on these receptors in your skin. If you inject something to block their operation, then you're not aware anything's out there. That's what we call a local anesthetic. But it only begins with the receptors. That's not the end point. From receptors in your skin, signals travel up nerves to the elevator of your spinal cord, and they go up to your brain. And they end up at a place called the somatosensory cortex, which is a strip along the outside of your brain about where you would wear headphones. If you were to measure brain activity along this strip, you'd see that every tiny millimeter of it corresponds to some particular part of your body. And you'd see that not all body parts are represented equally. Some parts have more real estate devoted to them, like your hands and your feet and your genitals and your mouth and your lips and your tongue. It's not surprising that we devote so much of our brain's territory to the hands. Humans began to walk upright several million years ago, and that freed up our hands to go and explore the world around us. They became much more important, and so our brain changed accordingly. The situation now is that our fingertips have 2,000 sensory receptors in them, and this gives us such exquisite sensitivity that we can feel little bumps the width of a human hair. Helen Keller could lay her hand on the radio and feel the difference between the strings and the coronets. Plato didn't think much of touch. He considered it the most carnal of all the senses. But his student Aristotle had a very different view. He said, while man falls below other animal species in all the other senses, in touch he excels other species in the exactness of discrimination. And that is why man is the most intelligent of all the animals.